Right, shall we try and actually start this? Um, quick review of DevCon 16 organization. What was, what went well, what went badly? Um, what went badly? We started things too late. I think every team says that every year. <laughs> yeah. So after DevCon 15, a final report didn't happen. We had the big blow up with the ch that res resulted in chairs resigning. I think we tried to fix that a bit, and then uh, people burnt out from that, and nothing happened for a few months. Um, oh, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah. We don't have chairs to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that helps. <laughs> There were things that kept moving forward, but we took way too long to get the sponsorship brochure done. Um, we, dis we blocked the sponsorship brochure on a website, and I don't think anyone was actually putting that much time into the website at that point. So we sat around for a few months, and we could have been chasing sponsorship, but weren't. But we, we could have been anyway. Yeah. I there's a mic here. There's two more handheld mics somewhere. Then, I mean, I mean, we we could have been chasing it anyway. So, like, the problem is yeah. not any of those. Like, we didn't have the brochure, we didn't have the final report, we didn't have the. The problem was just we didn't have a team for sponsorship, um, and in the end, a lot of it came down to like just me. And I had actually only volunteered this year to be a a like remote resource. So I hadn't. I was not in theory an active sponsorship team member this year, but it ended up coming all down to me. So let's not do that again next year, too. Good, good. But it worked. <laughs> As someone who wasn't in no, that... No, it didn't, actually. So it came, there came down to a week. So we're, we're in the red this year. Um, and there came down to a week when if I had sent out 100 extra emails, we probably wouldn't be in the red. And I was, like, doing other things because I didn't have time for it. Um, so if we had five people, even if I could have just said to someone please go send out 100 emails and know that it would happen, like, we would, we would be okay. So, I mean, I kind of see that as the bus factor thing. Never, never, never have a bus factor of one. As someone who wasn't in the sponsorship team, I didn't even know that was a problem. Um, I assumed, I thought we were waiting on a flyer, and that's why nothing was happening. Uh, weekly meetings would have, would have helped. We, we did have those. For a while, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we had me well, weekly meetings ever since before DC15. The, there was also the issue that people said they had contacted sponsors and they hadn't. And um, because we have this odd RT where, you know, nobody reads the spam, actually you're not tracking it. So one of the things that we need to improve, and we already said that in the DC17 buff, is that we really put into these um, sponsor list files when people have contacted sponsors. And if it's only like the initial prod or something, but that means you take ownership of that sponsor and you follow up with that. And yeah. if, you, if you don't do that, um, you either tell people proactively or after a few weeks, somebody else will basically try to take over if you just go on missing. So this, this would be, I guess, the process for uh, DC17 because that was actually a lack of communication. Um, we were thinking people were, had contacted the sponsors, and the sponsors came back to me during DevConf 16 now and said, why didn't nobody contact us? I suppose part of that is also CC the team on everything so that everyone can see what's going on. Yeah, so that was a policy, and we, we actually talked about this in the fundraising yeah. boff, and I think we've got a pretty good, so drop RT that's going away, uh, focus on the sponsors list in Git, uh, the, the sort of text formatted files that with nice scripts to do reports and things like that. One thing that would also be handy, you weren't there, but is the script that you did to send out automated emails for Waffer speaker notifications. It would actually be really handy to create a version of that that reads from those sponsor list files and can automatically send out like 100 messages. Because part of the time I was spending was not necessary. I would yeah. spend three days sending out 100 messages when I could have done it in five minutes. Um, with a with a good email template and a quick script. Um, do we have a uh, spon- we, we have lots of people that can do things like this, yes. <laughs> yes, but they're not, they're in one of our silos. They're not, right? 
So I mean, we have five versions of the scripts. Well, that's so something on. we can do this year. But that's right? a two link. That's an that's the kind of problem that we actually love to solve. So yeah, well, it's rather the kind than of, the hard ones. It's so. the kind of problem I love to solve too. Usually, but when I have three days and I have to scramble, and it takes me longer to figure all that out than to just send the hundred ma- messages and get at least seventy k of sponsorship, it's no. it, it ends I mean, up falling apart when it's I one mean, person. I mean, finding all our scripts and organizing things and making a pretty tools set up for that sounds like a volunteer is yeah we'll see um (laughs) is the kind of task that we like to do so yeah do we have a sponsorship team for next year that doesn't have a bus factor of one uh we have two locals which is good okay (laughs) and i don't know who else is 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 committed okay d lang is committed can i just Add from a personal point of view, my feedback as an experience as the only local on the sponsorship team. We did, in fact, ask multiple times on IRC, in person, on the team lists for more volunteers. I think what I could take um, as a message to the next team and to future teams, people don't like being on the sponsorship team. They find it intimidating. Um, But that's not an excuse. I think more people need to be on the sponsorship teams from local teams. I eventually joined and started working people. I mean, I knew I raised a couple of sponsorships like that. Everybody on the team should be doing that. It's the only way you're going to get local sponsorship. Yeah, but we have to be realistic about what people are able to do, too. (laughs) Should we move on from sponsorship team? Um... What was next in the timeline? Registration, probably, and venue contracts. We probably left our venue contracts and food contracts far long later than we should have, and that's because they were giving us a hard time and we were being disorganized. They were being far more disorganized. Um, but everything was sort of fine because we were committed to being at UCT and they couldn't do anything. They weren't going to kick us out. Um, it would have been a bit nicer to have signed the contract or at least a letter of intent a year in advance and been negotiating fine points at the end rather than which food, ca- which caterer are we going to be using a week before they start serving us food. But that was all. That all worked out fine. Except that we overcate, we overcated Deb Camp a bit. We had got caterers beforehand, but we just decided very late to yes. go with them. Yes. That's the point. Yeah. So, but um, also with the it venue, was this, it we was assumed this. we could bring outside caterers to the venue, and then they told us we couldn't at the last minute, and we scrambled to find options that would work, and it just dragged and dragged because yeah. we couldn't find something that fit the budget and was reasonable. It was the same with the venue contract per se, right? I think that was pretty much ready to be signed around June, July last year, as far as I remember my conversations with Bernal, but then uh, then we didn't know who was going to sign it and the whole legal representation and stuff, and so that dragged on for a long time. Yeah, so that's something that we should do with DC-17 straight then away. They, then they needed a huge deposit, which delayed things further. Except that, that really shouldn't be a problem. Um, like in the future, we can do that uh, if we know what the process is and if, we're, yeah. we, if we know what we're doing. So with regard to uh, the, the, I don't expect a long legal representation delay for DT17 because I'm yes. already looking into that. And we've got a letter of intent signed already, which makes yes. everything a lot more concrete. Thanks. Um, again, just from a team dynamic point of view, where I got frustrated there is sometimes someone needs to make unpopular decisions. And I think from a team dynamic point of view, DEPCONF needs to improve that ability. The, the problem we had there was making unpopular decisions on your own without talking to anyone. I'm not just talking about the Molly Blackburn Hall. I'm talking the frustration yeah. that led me to make the decision was because we were dragged on stuff that actually had an inevitable outcome. But I don't want to dwell on that. I just There are future things, and I think that's where the chairs issue also came in. Sometimes we need to make unpopular decisions. My approach for that was to try and deal with those in team meetings. Um, <coughs> If it wasn't too contentious and we could actually get a decision in the meeting, it was, seemed to be the only way we could get a decision. 
but then you've got to stick on that agenda item and force people to make the decision and still get through the rest of the agenda. A, a point I can add to that, it's, it's a very hard problem and it has not really been solved for quite a number of years. Um, I think it's probably good for the next teams to actually have a tie-breaking team or tie-breaking members, one or two persons that are entitled to take these hard decisions. That might be an idea to, to try. I think we kind of did that informally. Um. Well, yeah, sure, it happens informally, but then it frustrates people and, and things. So doing that explicitly might be... So, uh, I mean, of course, we, we will not go into a full govern governance session here because uh, this could uh, end up uh, tomorrow night and uh, most of us would miss a flight or something. But, uh, yeah, that was one of the uh, important uh, things uh, that uh, the, chair or, uh, the chair of figures had. And uh, I think that's something that's uh, missing. A small group of people that can, uh, as you say, uh, work as tiebreakers. And I, I, I think that should be, well... Uh, uh, looked uh, into again, maybe reappointed or, or seeking something. But the thing is, waiting for a consensus to emerge is often very frustrating and very inefficient. Yeah. I, I think practically in the last year, if Daniel and I reach an agreement on something, then that was, how, that was a decided decision. Of course, because you're the, the people doing yeah. the work, and that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that's worth. Uh, but I think that's, that's a lesson learned. Um, in DC 15, we had people doing the decisions that didn't do the work. And here, we basically kind of decided among the team, and that worked really nicely. Obviously, you always have the issue with too, much, uh, too few manpower and things delaying. And you know, many things actually only kicked up when Stefano came to South Africa. Um, because things have just been you know, not possible without him on the floor because this discussions were going back and forth and he actually kind of tie broke by being physically present. Um, but that was a very specific situation that um, not, you know, some important people on the local team were not local all the time. Um, so that won't be an issue, I guess, for DC-17. I don't think that the uh, tiebreakers are necessarily going to solve um our problems. We've had it in the past uh, and it just resulted in a situation where um, the entire people doing the work were no longer willing to make any decisions but shoved everything onto the chair's plates who were then overworked and eventually quit. Um, I mean, there were other factors uh, involved, but it, they really didn't want to be in, at the, the decision-making body. Um, so it's, it's a lot more about empowering um, the local team or the people who are doing the work to make the decisions. And I think that the, so it really worked well uh, if you guys managed to um, make decisions and, and you know, you didn't cause any conflict um, over them. I think that the, the best thing we can do in the future is to be very transparent about how these decisions are getting made. Like, you know, I've considered this, I've considered that, and therefore we decided to do this and, uh, and then just move on with things rather than to discuss and, and try to strive for consensus. Yeah, I think the struggle really is to... <laughs> you don't want to make the decision because this is hard work and it's going to be politically difficult and all of that, but you've got to force yourself to do it. And when you do that, it's mostly fine. Right. It is, it is hard work. It needs to be done because you need to move on. And it's only politically uh, difficult if the rest of the team sort of have this uh, um, feeling that everybody needs to be making the decision. When, when everybody accepts the fact that a decision needs to get made and that the people closest to the decision are probably the best people to make the decision, then it's also not, no longer really a political issue. Yeah, I don't think that was a problem we had people. Yeah. So, so something I want to give here is actually something that worked really well. So I know we blew up at the end of the last year, and we were scrambling for time, trying to get things done. But what that brought about was an attitude of, let's just get it done. Uh, it's like, let's not waste a lot of time on politics. Let's not waste a lot of time on, on discussing structure. Let's just get it done. And that actually worked incredibly well. So I'm kind of encouraged this year we can just let the new team yeah. just get things done. Just let them get things done and let's not get in their way too much. And I'm really encouraged that it may possibly be the de best DebConf year we've had in, like, I don't know, a decade. <laughs> Yeah, I can fully second that. The difference between DC 15 and DC 16 was DC 16 was 
a, a group of people that worked together and grew closer as they did. And DC15 was like different compartments that were doing awesome work. And you need to remember DC15 was like three times the size of DC16. So it's a bit harder to organize when it gets like really that large. But there were like really, you know, secret cabals and open cabals and any cabals. And so we didn't have any of that in DC 16. And that was just awesome. So if, well, Daniel, if, you, DC, I, if you DC 17 people can try to prevent that from the very beginning, you'll have a lovely time over the next I, year. I completely agree with what you say. Uh, but uh, you cannot uh, f uh, forget, you cannot stop uh, taking into account that after all, the, the culture where you grow uh, affects uh, how, uh, how the work is done. So yeah, here the, the team integrated very, uh, very, <laughs> very good, but uh, every team will, will interact differently. And uh, w uh, I mean, I think it's completely consistent w with what we expected uh, from Germans to be and what we expect <laughs> from South Africans to be. It's just... <laughs> Well, um, yeah, it, certainly your culture does affect how you operate, that's, that's true, but you, you can also be intentional about what culture you want to adopt and adjust in a direction. Uh, my, my employer is doing something similar because we're all remote and that's unusual for everyone and they're being intentional about culture, we can too. Fact, fact of the matter is that um, we've had in the past a couple of DEPCONs where um, the, the, you know, the manana culture kind of ended up in a successful DEPCONF, but it also made it very difficult for the rest of the team, like the ones that are not local, to work with, uh, with the local team. And I think a lot of uh, the sort of, um, I'm, I'm just going to talk freely, this is not intended <laughs> to be contentious, but uh, a lot of the sort of protective behavior on, this, on behalf of the global team stems from the fact that we've had DEPCONF local teams who were like, you know, um, Maybe, maybe they had everything under control, but it certainly didn't seem like that in the weekly team meetings at all points in time, like, you know, changing the venue three weeks before the conference and all this kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> so, so both, somewhere in the middle is, is the key. And I think still communication and, uh, and, and, and trying to find a middle ground of cooperation between uh, the different diverse backgrounds that we have is going to be the best way to go. Yeah, I, and I think on the question, the issue we came from of um, making decisions and so on, I think it is, it sometimes is necessary to, c to bring a decision to a meeting, but also we can try harder to have things prepared, as, I mean, as people ha often do, to p make sure it's on a list in advance, the options, and just make the actual, so the meeting is just make a decision rather than discuss every po issue and people raising a thousand questions about details and so on. The problem is people don't read any of those things until the meeting. Especially the people who aren't yeah, deep, deeply tied in the local team. I, I think maybe we could take an um, a better example from some of the other organizations out there who manage to have, like SPI sometimes having their five minute meetings where they just say, yes, 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 that's it. Uh, maybe we should get used to uh, organize meetings and make sure that decisions are being made at the end of the meeting. Uh, it's unlike Debian when we can make the decision when it's ready. Uh, for DEPCONF, we commit on dates and things don't wait because time is going. And that's, I mean, it's a cultural thing and we have to accept that for DEPCONF, we have to make a uh, decision in a timely manner. Uh, yeah, I just think it's good to have um, two, or like with Stefan and um, Daniel just making the final decision. And that's probably the best thing to do is you have someone who says, okay, we all chat about it. This is the time limit. We've got to chat about it. And this is the final decision. That's it. Now we move on. And, and that helps less discussion and trying to overanalyze everything. So I completely agree with that. Um, the missing factor or, or the, the recipe that we need to install for this to work in the future is, is trust in many ways, um, because apparently this team trusted Stefano and, and Daniel to make these decisions and we're happy to go along with it, but it is not always going to be the case. Or it, it, maybe, maybe it will be. In the past, it has not always been the case. And uh, one of the reasons I think that is, is because um, we don't have, at least this, it's not obvious to me, a, a sort of shared understanding of what DEPCONF is 
among the entire team, among all the people. So that, that leads to people going, looking very closely to individual decisions to make sure that their own very view or, or, or desires of DEPCONF are being, uh, are being fulfilled. And uh, I, I hope maybe you're going to introduce the idea that you mentioned the other day, um, how to bootstrap the, the team. The acceptance criteria. Right. Yeah. Because I think that, that is a very, or something we could try. It's a way to share common ground and be sure that we share the, com the same goals and the same way we want DEPCONF to be. The and that to, to avoid uh, any consensus. The sort of, I think the basic idea is something to, to give the, the local team um, an, an opportunity to write down what their vision of DEPCONF is, like how they want their DEPCONF. I know this is also contentious to, to say their DEPCONF because we do it all together, but what do they imagine? What are the ideas they want to take from the past, put into their conference? What are the new ideas they want to do? And then when this document exists, then the, the experienced people uh, try to find holes, you know, not criticize like this is not going to work or like this is, in, we've never done this, blah, blah, but like find holes, make sure that we don't leave anything out that the attendees expect from it. And then at the end, if we have a document that sort of describes this is going to be the upcoming DEPCONF and everybody's happy with that, then it's going to be much easier to defer to some people to make decisions because they are all, we're all in line. Um, we have to keep an eye on time. We've got 20 minutes remaining in the session. Yeah, I also wanted to share the fact that, uh, let me just, yeah. Um, uh, I think that having lost the bid for DC16 was a really interesting experience for us. And it really helped us organize ourselves and have the venues and understand how things worked. And uh, I think this, I don't think this should be a formal thing, but it, it looks like if, you know, if Prague, if the Prague team does a good job, they're going to have a lot of stuff that they already built a whole, build a whole bid for last year. So maybe this year there's going to be the same. And I think it's, it's something we should maybe encourage people to do and tell them that, you know, uh, building a whole bid in a year is maybe a bit ambitious. You know, building a team takes more time than that and approaching people. So I just wanted to share that. Jonathan and I were hoping to lose our bid the first time around, so we'd have more. So we'd get, we'd do some work on a bid, and then we'd work on a DevConf later. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had a DevConf. <laughs> but it's good though. Um, I think we should be walking through our, t our pad here, which says, how do we help the DevConf 17 team get started? Um, about this, uh, well, as you can see, we sort of already got started. Um, one of the things I think was a really interesting learning experience was uh, our, because we, we were talking about making difficult decisions and we already had one of these uh, very heart-wrenching decisions uh, regarding the choice of our venue. And uh, we sort of like learned a lot about how the, the DEPCONF works in terms of these, uh, making these difficult decisions. Um, I mean, I, I think it's not going to be surprising if I say we didn't have as much support and, and uh, we had some, but not as much as we envisioned about uh, getting global, global team members to help us decide um, on, uh, on the, the venue. And so we really had to, to uh, we had a, a, a quite a long meeting and we had to decide at the end, we had basically just a vote. Uh, and majority, like slight majority, won for uh, for for this, the venue, and that for us, that I feel that was our moment of deciding what we wanted uh, DebConf to be. Um, so so yeah, we're I feel we're 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 well on our way to to organizing. We're not I I don't feel we're in a uh, at a point where we're st we have to start thinking about. Uh, the, the big things, certainly there's a lot of uh, details and a lot of small things that, that we want to get right and we've already, we've already started listing a bunch of those. We, uh, at the, uh, right at the beginning of the conference, Gabriel opened an um, uh, Etherpad uh, document where he started putting two, three things and, and now it's like we have like 40 points <laughs> of little, little things that we not, don't necessarily have to think about one year before, but who, that we, we felt uh, uh, really uh, improved the experience for attendees. So, so yeah, we're, we're obviously going to be sharing this and, uh, and um, yeah, there's of course lots of, works, uh, lots of work in front of us. 
if I can say anything about that, it's those last those things you think you don't need to deal about now. Deal with them as soon as you possibly can, because at the last minute you've got so much other stuff to do. So what you're saying is it's a hybrid manana, not manana culture. Plan a year in advance for things you're going to deal three months in advance. Subtract one year, one from the year, just like you know, pretend it's due tomorrow. Yeah, but what if it doesn't take stuff off the list? Yeah, but I mean, we don't have to buy the coffee a year in advance. Please don't. It won't taste good. If if we'd bought more coffee in advance and considered how much coffee people actually needed, the coffee machine wouldn't have run out. <laughs> um, it also doesn't have any more beans, and they won't sell us more beans. Well, they wouldn't sell us any yesterday. Uh, wonder why. Uh, it was a Friday, so they don't sell beans on Fridays for some reason. <laughs> the next item I have on here is what are the first steps? Yeah, I think you've kind of covered some of that. What's coming next? Uh, well, we've, uh, we've gotten uh, non-local people onto our Canboard instance. That's uh, like um, shaping up to be our main um, uh, task tracking uh, tool. So obviously, uh, whoever is not on there, um, is still not on there and wants to be part of the DebConf 17 effort, come and see me. Uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get you on there. And um, yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, there's still stuff to do, like for for catering, uh, for treasury sponsorship. The, I, I think one of the big takeaways I personally have, and I, I guess this is also shared by the team, is that we really need to get our our stuff together for sponsorship. We sort of delayed a bit on on this uh, this front. We've we've had we've had like informal discussions, but um, but yeah, one of the take takeaways is that uh, we want. We want sponsorship to be as uh, as concrete as possible, as soon as possible, and um, we also don't want to delegate this. Okay, like one person takes care of, of sponsorship, but really that that should be that should be a task that uh, that's um, distributed as much as possible over the the entire team. Uh, last subject. The best one. <laughs> um, how people see the chairs and what should be their role? The delegates, let's right, say. Yeah, two and a half oh. minutes to <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that uh, have, has been said uh, earlier that uh, the role main, mainly wasn't passed to act as a tiebreaker body, uh, so was seen as frustrating. And I mean, my hope is will be that that body will be an en enabling thing rather than blocking thing in the future. And so, how to get this done? I mean, how? What are the expectations of people? And how I, th to get I think the people? biggest thing is ability to sign documents and approve budgets, and doing that early on. And that not having chairs, we kind of ended up in a bad position in a few ways there. Um, and and. Beyond that, I mean, there's lots of things they could be, and people have different ideas on what they should be, but beyond that, it doesn't actually matter all that much. Uh, we just need chairs delegated by the DPL with the authority to do the essentials. Um, and if we start there and iterate, we would probably be okay. We did get a DPL to sign documents fairly quickly when we needed it, but yeah. Um, I, I, this is... This is potentially contentious as well, of course, but uh, we have had situations in the past where um, the local team took decisions that were not okay in uh, terms of the debt conf uh, values or whatever. And so it could be the DPL because we hope that it's not going to happen very often, but uh, previously also the chair's role was to, to have the authority to say no to something. Of course, that then ended up in a steering committee um, and it wasn't very clear, um, and, and, and it is very, very much in conflict with the whole idea of like letting the local team get the work done and supporting them. But it's hard to be lived correctly. I don't know if it is in conflict. I mean, I think FTP masters, you know, you delegate the authority, you let them get their job done, um, you don't veto unless absolutely necessary. I think the same philosophy works with a very active, vibrant local team 
that we just let them get their work done. You know, we're there to be responsible when needed, but it, don't get in the way. I think it's fine, and it seems very Debian. It feels very Debian. I, it's fine sorry. for the teams to do that by. Oh, I think. Um, I mean, it became easier in the end, in the towards the end of this cycle because there weren't that many people who were active apart from people who considered themselves to be local team, whatever. Um, in I in the I we would well. From my point of view, I would I probably to keep things running in general. We would like there to be more people who are staying on from year to year, um, and as much as at different times in the past we've tried to um, do things to avoid that kind of conflict, there's a kind of natural break between the two parts of the team in that way because just because of there's some group of people who have physical meetings, see each other, chat in the bar about something and they'll tend to make a decision informally. And then if you go to a wider meeting, of course you get some kind of conflict if the other people don't share the same. It's, I mean, it's, you can do a lot of different things to try and smooth that and thinking about it actively and so on, but there's always going to be a slight risk of tension there. I mean, whatever you do. It's mostly difficult for the chairs to fulfill that role properly. And it's really hard to do that, I guess, when it's not publicly accepted what their role is. Maybe one, one piece of advice for the next year's locals would also be to act as if you are work, working remote. Mm. And even if you meet in the, in the same room and discuss things, make sure you have at least a minute of that meeting outside to the list. And it might sound obvious, but it's really important to be reminded of that. If you want anyone out who is not a local to help you, you need to include them. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's kind of up to you. So we'll just leave it to you. Thank you. Yeah, no, the thing is, yeah, you, you can see I'm like, uh, Going through my thoughts, I think uh, there is a lot to say, but uh, many of us have already said it over and over. It is a very hard decision how, how the governance for DEPCONF works. Uh, I am on, on the opinion that uh, a chair-like figure uh, works better than not having it. But, uh, but I think we have iterated the, 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 the topic enough. I know the opinion of many people in this room, of course, not, not of everybody. And I think, uh, well, we need the opinion of uh, somebody with a higher authority to, to, give, uh, to tell us what, we, uh, what, what will happen. Yeah. So I think the delegation is needed uh, to avoid any doubt uh, on that. Uh, I think that in the past we've put too much pressure on the chairs because the delegation says they are responsible of the organization of DEPCONF when it's not totally the case because uh, when things happen badly, they don't have necessarily the tools, the mechanisms, to the budget, the people to get it uh, fixed. Uh, so we cannot uh, have um, very high expectations from what the chairs can do. That's why I want them to be like, um, I mean, helping the team, empowering them uh, uh, to do the stuff, uh, finding new volunteers, making call for helps. I didn't see, them, see that happening for in the past, for example. So that's how I see the future delegates to act. So they are not there to frustrate people, to block them for doing the work, but they are helping, um, helping them to get the things done. And, and well, just to, to add a final point to, my, to what I was uh, thinking, the, the problem is uh, very hard to solve on the air. Sure. Uh, well, also because it, it's a lot of dealing with people. So, so if the local team and the, the, the delegates or the global team or whatever don't get along, it will be very hard to find a, a workable solution. Yeah, yeah I that's, completely agree. And, and I think that's uh, well, what happened uh, when, when we had this uh, mass resignation. 
there was not a, uh, there was no way to get them to work together. So so of course they they felt they they could not continue pretending to do so. Hmm? Sure. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.